Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. This is an electric golf cart. It's kind of a souped up golf cart. It's got knobby tires and a higher suspension. We didn't know what to call it. A friend of ours suggested that we call it Ed because we couldn't decide on a name. So for us, this is Ed. So meet Ed. I know you're surprised I didn't name it Johnson, but um, this thing's too small to be called Johnson. This is a sponsored video. Sun Gold Power sent me some equipment to review and I am going to use it to do a modification in this cart that is gonna make it one of my favorite tools on the farm. First, let me show you, this isn't necessary, but I've upgraded the battery to lithium ion. We've finally gotten to the point where the lithium ion batteries are comparable in price to the lead acid. This thing takes six eight volt lead acid batteries, which run about to, to do all six of them was like, I think $850 when I priced it. These cost twice as much. So this was ex an expensive upgrade, but they last twice as long and are comparable in the amount of energy that's in them. Let me show you what Sun Gold Power sent me. So here it is. This is a 6,000 watt inverter. And this is their TP6048. It's a 48 volt hybrid inverter. This thing is very cool. I am real hopeful. Now I still need to do testing on it. We're gonna do that in this video and make sure it lives up to what it says. The, there's two things about this that are phenomenal. Three things actually. The price is really very reasonable. We'll talk about that later. You can hook it directly to your panels. You don't need charge controllers. So if you have 6,000 watts of panels, this and a battery bank, you are good to go. You've got a 6,000 watt system. The other thing that's awesome about it is you can hook them in parallel. You can put two of them and get 12,000. You can put three of them and you can get 18,000 watts. You can go all the way up to, I think it's 50 some thousand watts of power hooking these inverters in parallel. It's like a little modular system. You can start out with six knowing you wanna expand in the future and it's not hard to do. You haven't thrown your money away buying a smaller inverter to start with. What a cool system. So let's tear into this thing and have a look at its build quality. Man, this thing is heavy. Much heavier than I was expecting. This thing's built like a tank. All right, I just weighed it. It's about 75 pounds, which is 34 kilograms. So I can tell you the price point of this thing. Uh, this thing's going for $1,600 right now. From what I can tell, that is an awesome price per watt. So something I notice already that I really like is the way this just plugs in with an ethernet connector. And that comes off very easily because you're gonna need to take that off to do all your connections. Here's your AC input, line one, line two, neutral, output, line one, line two, neutral. That's where the weight's coming from. That is a transformer right there. All the screws seem reasonably tight. Just kind of checking overall build quality. That screw was a little looser than I would have liked. I want to pull this thing apart just a little bit more to really get an assessment of what's going on in here. Now I'm not an electronics expert. I'm not going to be able to explain the ins and outs of how this inverter is functioning, but I've looked at enough to know when they're well built and when they're not. So far what I see looks good. Yeah, see, they've put some hot glue on these connections to keep them in place. I see some more hot glue over here, some more down here. So that's good. You know, that keeps things from vibrating loose over time. Yeah, so that's about as far as I'm really going to be able to take it. I'd have to take at least one of these connectors off and they're all hot glued in place and I really don't want to mess it up but I can see well enough underneath that I don't see anything but similar build quality. The solder joints look good. Lots of things are hot glued in place. If I had bought this myself I wouldn't be taking this apart but I'm doing a review. Figure uh, I owe it to you guys to dig into it and take a look at it. See how things look. And what I'm seeing, I'm pretty impressed. You know, I think this is, um, this is as good as I would hope to find. The size of the wire in that transformer. Fuses. The 
the good heat sinks here. Let's see, I can show you underneath it all. Everywhere I look, things look well organized, well connected. Connections are backed up with hot glue. Looks like they were trying to do it right. Taking a look at the specs, your input voltage can be 120 to 450 volts DC. So that's a good broad range. Gonna work with most systems. Your AC output, it is 120 volts in two phases that are 180 degrees from each other. So line one to line two is gonna be 240 volts. That's a typical way that you wire uh, residential systems in the US. And it can output 50 or 60 Hertz. Uh, 50, of course, is Europe. U.S. is 60 hertz. And your AC input, this is for charging batteries and things like that. Uh, again, line 1, line 2, 120 volts. The battery voltage is 48 volts, and it can charge up to 120 amps at 48 volts. I hope this thing lives up to its specifications because this is uh, very reasonably priced. This would be an awesome starter inverter. Uh, I already have my solar system, but for someone just getting into it, if this thing does what they say it'll do, this would be the way to go, I think. So I'm going to check that out for you in this video, and I'm going to be honest about it. You know, they sent this to me. I said I'm going to do an honest review. That's always the case. So I've wired my AC output to a NEMA 1450 receptacle, and now I can plug in whatever I need to that. So I need to make various adapters. So here's an adapter I wired up. This is NEMA 1450 here. This is a 50 amp plug, that's for my welder. This is a standard 120 volt receptacle. This only uses one line, this uses two lines. And the wires going to this are 12 gauge, whereas this is big, big fat wire. So uh, I did put a 20 amp breaker on the, the hot line going over here because I, I wanted to current protect this side of things. This can handle anything the inverter can put out, so its current protection is built into the inverter. There's some reasons that I did it this way. Let me explain. I want to be able to run my welder. That's what my welder plugs into, but notice it's three wires. It has two hots and a ground. There's no neutral there. So if I were to put the welder plug there, I would be losing my neutral. Um, I also want to be able to plug in regular things, of course, so I've got this as well. This requires a neutral and a hot and then the ground. So I need all four wires to do the welder and just regular 120 volt power. This plug gives me all four wires and can handle whatever amperage I need to put to it. I can plug these in like that. And now I have the ability to run my welder and any standard electrical outlet stuff that I wanna run. I've changed plans slightly. Originally my plan was to mount it permanently under here. 
I'd have to move those batteries over one space and there is enough room that I could fit it down in there. It's very heavy and I don't think it's good for it to be bouncing around constantly. Most of the time when I use this cart, I'm not needing electricity, so I don't wanna do that to it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is make it so that I can just throw it in the back, pretty easily hook it to the batteries and use it as needed and then take it out of the cart. So I'll turn it on now. And there it's powering up. It's showing line one is 120 volts and line two is 120 volts. Line one is 60 hertz, line two is 60 hertz. I mean, I could output 50 hertz power with this thing. I could run an appliance that's made for Europe. Showing my battery voltage, 53.2 volts. Yeah, it's showing you watts, battery amperage, watt hours. A lot of good information on this thing. Now, moment of truth, let's see what I can run. Here I've got just a circular saw. It shouldn't have any problem with this. Let me get a board and we'll actually put this thing under load. This is set to show me the amps and I am gonna be cutting full thickness a piece of oak. Basically, I'm gonna push this saw as hard as it'll go. I've run this circular saw on inverters before and it usually feels weak. This feels just like I'm plugged into the wall. Let's try something else. Now here's this mag drill and I'm just gonna push real hard and see how much, how many amps I can get this thing to draw. So that won't even draw as much as the circular saw. That's what I figured. I have one other 120 volt appliance that I think will do a little bit more. Let's go check that. I am plugged into this big evolution chop saw. I've popped the breaker with this tool before, and that's a 20 amp breaker. So I know it pulls some amps. Yeah, I pushed it about as hard as I wanted to. It said overload, but the tool didn't shut down. That's interesting. So basically I took line two as far as it wanted to go right there. And I don't know how many amps I got. I'm gonna have to go back and review the footage. You jerks already know. It might seem confusing that I got a warning with only 3000 watts. I thought this was a 6000 watt inverter. Well, it can put 3000 watts on each line for 6000 watts total. A 240 volt appliance, which we'll do next, will pull from both lines. But that's pretty impressive. It's popped my 20 amp breaker. It did not pop this and I was pushing it. I would never cut with it that hard. Now I should mention here, I think the weak link in this system is not the inverter, it's my batteries. And that overload that it called may very well have been due to battery voltage drop. All right, here's one of the really important tests for me, the welder. So my welder is 240 volts and to be able to take it anywhere on the farm and weld is gonna be so helpful. Oftentimes there will be a gate or something out in the field that's broken and I can't weld there. I've always thought I should get a 110 volt welder and a little inverter. Well, don't need it. This is gonna do the trick, I hope. Well, let's see, I could set the voltage to, let's see, five, wire speed to 70. Well, I just turn it up to 11. That welded perfectly. Full power, let me show you this. Except that I couldn't see and I went off course. You know, those are two pieces of half inch and I just welded them together. It welded just like it was plugged into the wall. That is awesome. I have an idea, we're gonna really try to push this inverter to its max and see what it can do. We're gonna turn some things on. This is on amperage. I'm gonna push this thing until it's not happy. All right, so first I want some lights. The lights are on. Should we really push this thing? Should we see if it can turn on the compressor? That would be something. 
turn the lights back off because this compressor is a beast. And let's see if it can start it. I'm going to be surprised actually if it can. The meter was a little slow, but showed a peak of 32 amps. I suspect it was actually higher. Pretty impressive. This is the biggest tool I have. This pulls more amperage than anything else. It's 240 volts. If you push it hard, you can get it up to 30 amps. So this should overload that inverter, and I'll be surprised if it even starts it. I would never have even thought to consider this. I can't believe it started the compressor. So let's give it a go. This is starting the, the main drive. Yeah, it's struggling. I'm having to hold the button down to make it go. So that's too much. I'm not surprised. That noise, by the way, is the air to tension the belt. So it makes noise when you're, and you obviously want that on when you're trying to turn it on. Hey, Jen, can you come do me a favor? Yeah, sure, what? Just grab hold of this real quick. Just the outer two prongs there. Just, just grab hold and don't let go. Uh, why? It's for my YouTube channel. Trust me, it's going to make great YouTube content. Uh, I don't think so. <sighs> Come on. No. Good luck with that. Crap. Got the whole dug already and everything. All right. How about my planer? So there's a chance that the limiting factor here was my batteries. Cart batteries I don't think have the capacity that the inverter does. So what I've done is daisy chained up, you know, a rig. Uh, these are two batteries for my dump truck. This is from my lift, that's from my sawmill. Those are all good batteries. The smallest one is capable of putting out 650 amps. Uh, now these measure 50 volts. I've got them wired in series. So I've got Negative here, and there's my negative to the inverter. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And there's positive to the inverter. If this is able to put out 650 amps, the other batteries are all bigger. So the internal resistances should, should be such that I can get 600 amps for a short period of time at 50 volts. 600 amps times 50 volts is 30,000 watts. The battery is certainly not a limiting factor anymore. I tried starting the sander again with no change in results, and now I'm going to quit abusing this inverter. <laughs> so no fault to the inverter at all here. This is a very powerful sander. I would not expect a 6,000 watt inverter to be able to start this. Get two of them, run them in parallel like the, the inverter's designed to do, and you'd run this no problem. And here it is plugged back into the grid. So turning my cart into a portable power station has been something I've been thinking about for a while, but last winter something happened that really made me realize I need to make this a reality. We had a big snowstorm, the power went out, and it was out for a while. If I remember right, it was like a week. And I have a generator. I was able to get it running up at the house, keep the refrigerators cold. It's a small portable generator. I'm gonna fix that too. We're gonna put in a real standby generator, but it is on a different circuit. This hay barn where I keep my tractor it gets its power from the stable, which is a totally different uh, electrical circuit. There's a different transformer. So I come down here, there's snow all over the ground and I need to feed the cows and I need to bring them hay. Well, sure enough, tractor won't start. Oh, well that's easy to solve. I have a uh, block heater and I also have a, a battery charger. Well, guess what? There's no power. I can't do the block heater and my battery charger was, wasn't on so the battery was getting weak for me trying to start it. So what do I do? Yeah, I'd have to go get the generator, disconnect the house, bring it down here, and run it for hours just to do a block heater for the tractor to get it started. Because, you know, you, you want to run the block heater at least for an hour, maybe two. 
it preheats the oil and the block and everything makes it much easier to start. Works great, but I didn't have any easy way to get power down here. Well, now that problem is solved. So I just finished putting new deck boards on the dock. Nothing exciting, just screwing down boards so I didn't film it. Man, this thing has already, already made itself <laughs> quite loved by me. To be able to come down here, just plug it in with an extension cord and take my circular saw. I just put the boards down, let both ends run wild, popped a chalk line, saw it off. You could do the same thing, I guess, with a nice lithium ion powered cordless saw, but I don't have one of those and I don't really want to buy one. By the time I needed one for something like this again, the battery would be dead and I'd need a new battery. I don't know. Uh, th this is just a game changer because I've got that saw. That saw is always going to be able to work as long as I can plug it in. And now I can plug it in anywhere. That's a big fish. Hey, my quick connect came for the battery leads. So I will permanently attach this to the battery. I'll probably get a cap, but this as it is, uh, it would be very difficult to short those, those leads out because of the, the way it's built. And then you just plug it in and you're connected. And then when I'm done using the inverter, you just unplug it. Awesome. here for whatever reason the ground under here is soft i have filled this thing in so many times it always comes back so i'm going to put some concrete in it and i finally have the ability to mix it up without doing it by hand Ugh. That's good, that's a good consistency. You don't want it real wet. You know, this isn't a concrete slab. It's going to crack, but it's going to have more resistance to the down pressure than just gravel does. I've done this before and I've been successful with it. Actually, I think letting it crack up a little bit and getting, you know, big pieces instead of one big slab allows the, the when you gravel over top of it for it to function like gravel. This just gives it a good base that won't push down so much. But wow, how awesome that I could just bring my concrete mixer up here and mix it up you know that's a miserable job to try to do by hand and now it's a piece of cake here you go guys portable power station and a real one man i can power anything i want with that thing that is really awesome and thanks to sun gold power for sending this inverter to me i'm really impressed uh, if i was in the market for an inverter i would definitely look at this inverter and it would probably be the one that i would end up buying I love the fact that you can start out 6,000 watts and then increase its capacity. If I was doing my solar install right now, I think what I would shoot for is 12,000 watts. Two of these inverters and a 12 kilowatt uh, solar array, that would just be awesome. No charge controllers necessary. I still can't believe that this one inverter was able to run everything in my shop, 
except for the wide belt sander. I'm not just blowing smoke, I'm giving an honest review here. I'm super impressed with it and hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.